Hello and welcome to a follow-up to XCOM's explanation how TNT works. So in this little series I want to mo talk more about uh, how TNT actually behaves in-game. XCOM talk more about how the ray casting is done, where the peak level of the TNT is. All of that will be coming in handy, so you should have definitely watched it. Links will be in the description. All of this will be interesting for pearl cannons or all kinds of other stuff, clearing out larger areas, which we'll come to in a bit. Yeah, but first of all, I want to properly explain the triangles, which I've shown in a really short video without sound. So, if you shoot some TNT, you always have your propulsion and your projectile. The propulsion is only used to propel your projectile somewhere, so this basically stays in the cannon. It's just used to get your TNT that you want to do stuff with somewhere. So in this case, we will always use 20 propulsion because everything scales with it, obviously. And only one projectile just to show stuff. So if you shoot something, some TNT just like this, you would expect the TNT to go diagonally and just fly there. And after, depending how much fuse you left it, it will blow up. But that's exactly what TNT actually doesn't do. So if you blow up something like this, the TNT will go straight up and straight over. And over here, I made this really nice setup so we have our 20 fuse TNT and we have our one projectile which has to start with exactly one game tick of fuse left and the TNT will, as shown, go straight up nothing is blocking it here or anything and then it will fly straight over and here it completed the first triangle which is exactly one game tick so let's show this Right there. Okay, and then now let's add a game tick delay to our projectile. And it will blow up right there. And so on. We go to E. And we can do one more. So this is really useful to know about. Uh, right now we can't go more than four game ticks since we only have 20 projectile. And yeah, if you go more projectile, obviously the triangles go much bigger and you can also go more delay and further. But let's go straight to the next thing. So it's not only 2D, you can also do this in three triangles. So in a setup like this, this is our propulsion, we have 20 yet again, and one projectile. And if we leave this on one game tick fuse, it will fly up, fly over, and over again. So over here we have another nice little demo setup. We will summon 20 projectile here, uh, 20 propulsion here, and one projectile there. And everything is blocked off, so if it if it would fly as it renders, this wouldn't work. Let's demonstrate this. I have a nice little command ready. Let's see, it's also on to one game tick delay. Going up right here. Let's add another game tick. And I didn't bother to figure out the next angle, it's just <laughs> way too complicated. But yeah, it goes on and on. So you can totally rely on all of this and do some crazy stuff with it. Always keep in mind TNT is 0.98 blocks wide. And uh, with alignment and different setups, you can, you can do some crazy stuff with TNT, which we will come into right now. So I'll be right back. And right away, now we're going to talk about the tunneling effect. I would just call it up that order to be honest. So this time we're going to summon a propulsion right here, which is going to be 75 TNT and a projectile, which is going to be 20 TNT right there. So let's first of all demonstrate what would happen if we just shot a normal TNT cannon at it. We have a two game ticks delay between propulsion and projectile. 
I'm just gonna shoot 22 two of it. Bang. We removed seven blocks. Yay. Bunch of TNT wasted. And now let's talk about TNT and update order. So if we summon this propulsion on 12 ticks delay through three repeaters on full delay and the projectile on 12 ticks delay through 12 repeaters on the first tick, we're gonna summon both of them in exactly the same game tape, but the propulsion is gonna be much later processed, gonna be much later processed because it has to go through much more repeaters. So and this way we can up the efficiency of TNT by a whole lot and remove a ton of stuff in one single game tick. Bang! We just removed 60 blocks. And all of this happens in one game tick. Of course this has one huge downside is the further you wanna go, the you need uh, much much more TNT. Like everything like as far as your uh, Projectile can go in one game tick as far that is as far as you're gonna remove blocks. So as if we wanna go any further than 60 blocks, we already would need instead of 75 TNT at least like 125 to see anything happening. So this scales dramatically. That's one of the reasons we will need a lot more TNT from now on. And yeah, let's just show this one more time. So now next let's combine the two things we have learned so far, which is the triangles and the tunneling effect. So right here we're gonna summon a propulsion of a lot more TNT, that's about 150 I think, and a projectile of I think 25, right there. And what is gonna happen, it's gonna be on the update orders again, 12 ticks here through 3 repeaters, 12 ticks here through 12 repeaters. It's gonna uh, try to do the normal triangle stuff, but it's gonna be blocked because we have to use way more TNT in our triangles would of course get huge and we have to have to force it into always the same one. This is what we're gonna do right here. So we're gonna block the momentum to this side and what's gonna happen is the TNT will basically go into the other direction as long as it hits a border and then it will fly straight over. And we can use this really well to clear out larger areas. So let's demonstrate this. Bang. And now we can just remove this here. Shoot again. The next one. Yeah, and as you can see from now we can clear out huge areas from a single spot and all we have to do is get the TNT to here. Which yeah, as soon as Ita shown his uh, duping array, which is super cool, and all of this is only possible because of it, and all the credit goes to him, uh, I will show some actual working setups, survival friendly which can clear out huge areas. The only limiting factor is really lag and XCOM is already working on TNT optimizations, which will definitely come in handy. They're running already. I'm testing them super hard. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any follow-up questions, stuff like that, let me know in the comments. And yeah, see you soon.